Hey everyone, it's Evie here, and today I'm going to do a little VR or video response. Hopefully I could do it all in one shot and not have to break it up into several videos today or several segments today. I hope it, it's not going to be an editing nightmare. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. But we are going to do the uh, food weight and body block uh, spread with uh, Tarot Alchemist did it and Jennifer Ball did it. I think Evelyn Timeless might have done one. I don't remember. All right. I really enjoyed this tag um, from what Jennifer Ball and Tarot Alchemist talked about because I myself struggle with a little bit of weight problems myself. <laughs> Secret confessions of Evie. I suffer from overweightness, like most of us are. I have been stricken with the curse of being overweight after I had my twins. And I've had a very traumatic delivery with Judith, with the C section, and uh, the stresses with going on with Judith. And everything that's been going on with that too. So I've gained 50 pounds since the twins and never been able to keep it off since then. So it's part of adulting. It's part of a growing up. It's part of everything. It's just feels like that tower moment. Like why? Why? I never struggled with weight before. It's actually kind of funny because I've never struggled with weight before until after I had my kids. And, but my family members struggle with weight problems. My mother has struggled with weight all her life. My sister has struggled with weight all her life. My dad, up until he met uh, she who not must be named, <laughs> struggled with a little bit of weight. But he, I think it was more of a um, stress weight too, knowing my dad. And my brother does struggle with weight, too. So everybody in my family has struggled with weight. <laughs> and now I've been able to pick up the torch and have my double chin rock in the double chin. Go to think chin, chin happy thoughts. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I feel so embarrassed now. Chin happy thoughts. Oh, my goodness. All right, and I'm going to use my Terra Prog today, my lovely Terra Prog that I actually really adore and I miss using. So I'm going to uh, do this 18-part question, and hopefully I'll do it something similar like the uh, inner, what was it, the inner tarot stories? Yeah, the that one where I just draw eight cards, and then I just go one by one and just kind of reveal to the screen. Because this is just not a film <laughs> filming studio space right now. If you notice, I'm at my kitchen table. I'm at my kitchen table. So, no further ado. Let me feel what's right. And then I have to remember to put this in order to for myself later. <laughs> I can't always rewatch my videos. I'm so vain. I watch my videos all the time. Is see what I need to improve on and what uh, other things that I need to do. Vain for the win. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. All right. And my first card, we're going to do it this way, is the uh, Three of Cups. And it, the first question is, what are the patterns, actions around money, what do you, I do? Or around money, a weight, or what? So we're talking really about body and weight and stuff like that. So 
what are my patterns and actions around money? What do I do? Okay, so this, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I'm trying to read the questions as uh, right here <laughs> so I could somewhat look at the camera. <sighs> I'm excessive. I spend too much. Oh my goodness, I'm so embarrassed now. <laughs> I just flaunt more with it. Could actually use on my bills and things like that. I, oh God, this is really getting personal. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe I should just move to the next one because this one is really, really personal, and I feel like feel very exposed right now. <laughs> All right, so this one. Uh oh, it's upside down. But I'm trying not to cheat. <laughs> All right, what are the physical results I get? Um, so I get tied up financially. Oh my goodness, my tarot cards are calling me out. Mm. Self-explanatory. Let's just leave it at that. What are the physical results I get? So I get tied up. I get tied up mentally. I get tied up financially. I get tied up in every aspect of my life when I, I, I do excessive things, especially with my body and my weight. So I get tied up. I get constrained. I don't, I'm not able to go outside like I used to. I use the girls as a burden, a crutch. I use the girls as a way to not lose weight. I use the girls as an excuse, especially Judith a lot. <laughs> so that's what I see this as too. But my cards are also calling me out on my financial problems too right now. So there you go. <laughs> Okay, what conscious beliefs do I hold, think, say, repeat? Action of action. So I say, I am not, you know, so it's basically, I see this as a, the pure Aries or that pure egotistical Aries mindset that I have sometimes that shit can't happen to me. I, uh, I feel like I am... <laughs> just ego driven, stubborn. I don't listen to advice. I don't even listen to my card's advice. I just uh, be, uh, go to my be own rhythm. I go to my own drum. I just choose not to. <laughs> oh God, I feel so bad. I feel so called out right now. I feel so victimized by my tarot. <laughs> This is going to be a disaster video. <laughs> okay. What are the judgments I hold about food, weight, and my body? <sighs> okay. I get it. I get it. Uh, <laughs> I, I probably will edit this little part out. But the judgments I hold about food, weight, and body is... <clears throat> Really, I, I use it, feel like that I deserve to be happy. It's it's more of like I feel obligated, not obligated, what's the right words? I feel entitled to be happy. I feel a sense of entitlement to be happy with my food, my weight, my body. I feel entitled that I should buy whatever I want, get what I want, and no questions asked. Okay, and so the, the judgment is uh, what do I hold about myself in, in relationship to food? weight in my body and it's burdens oh my god this is I view my uh weight or my view my relationship to food and stuff is unhealthy because I feel like it's weighing me down spiritually I feel like it's wearing me down uh creatively because also wands is a creative suit and I feel like it's weighing me down physically too and so I feel like the how I feel like a, how I am related to food and my weight and my body is that I feel like I'm, it's restraining me from being the creative person that I am. So I probably should take my husband's advice and jump rope. I hate jump roping. <laughs> I hate working out and he tells me that I have to be active and I should jump rope. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But cards are telling, calling me out too. Okay. What expectations do I have to effort, success, and releasing weight. Unrealistic expectations. <laughs> Maybe I should just uh, get up from the couch. Maybe I should not put out too much effort. <laughs> God, unrealistic expectations. 
I'm so I'm I'm I might as well just do this for the rest of the video and just kind of go <laughs> because I'm feeling so called out. This is very vulnerable right now, everybody. I'm just letting you know I'm feeling very vulnerable throughout this whole video. <laughs> I'm feeling more and more vulnerable <laughs> as they were losing the cards. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> okay, it's over. Seven. What energetic patterns and imprints I have no what energetic patterns and imprints have come in past lives oh physical body physical uh, traditions physical weight physical so okay my I do believe in reincarnation I do believe in past lives um, and I feel like and the reason why I do a lot of warrior paintings i have actually done uh and i feel so connected to the aries and feel so connected to everything warrior everything aries i feel i write it in my stories in my fictional stories i write about warriors and and all this stuff too and in my past life it was actually kind of funny is in my past life i feel like i was a warrior more than one time i was a soldier i was top dog i was <clears throat> number one a warrior a lot whether it being in china being in germany being in this place or that place i was a very militia military i was a very active and i had a very heavy military mindset too so i f was very structured and when i was in retail and the working field before i had the kids that really shined out that I had a very maliciousness, uh, an Aries maliciousness when I was uh, in my jobs and stuff like that. And so I've ended up hurting a lot of people, believe it or not. I was not always this nice Evie. I was very structured. I was very regimented. I actually had high expectations. I am viewed like, I'm one of those people that I feel like when I was a manager and stuff, I say it once, don't make me say it twice, because then there will be consequences. See, there's that little bit shining through, I feel like, right there. <laughs> but so in my past lives, I feel like that I was the strict regimented warrior and not really, sometimes not maybe a very nice person back in the past. However... I feel like in this lifetime, I am the lazy warrior, meaning that I did my dues. I paid my time back in my other past lives of being the active um, bodybuilder, active um, person working out. I was the, you know, that um, I'm losing my words. Uh, I the active lifestyle. I was an active person and an active lifestyle. And I feel like that a lot of my past lives, I was very, very <clears throat> active. And I am now am just saying, kick back, relax, put on my feet, read a few tarot cards, do some art, be a little bit more of a spiritualist than a warrior. So, I guess that's the thing. I, I, what I want, I wanted to actually make this a, its own video, so I might have to just skip on to the next question. But basically, there's a lot of attachments I have with this card being the Page of Pentacles and being physically present and uh, what it means to me in my past lives and why I'm holding on to it and why I'm so lazy now, so to speak. So... I'm going to rewatch my own video and do some journaling of this kind of, of the, all this once I'm done. Okay. And the next question, so we could just move on. What beliefs have come from the ge generations of family? Mm. Okay. From the family. And I think even Jennifer Ball had this card, which is even that much more funny. <laughs> my mom... She never worked out, 
um, or had any exercise routines. My dad never had any exercise routines or worked out. My sister is, we, I, I came from a family that, uh, we've n never had any exercise routines. We were not very structured. Believe it or not, I, I'm kind of reading this as the reversal of the emperor. We were not structured people. We were not the active type. Um, actually my whole family are artists. And we are very, I'm not saying lazy people, but we are not very structured as far as our uh, habits go. It's not that we don't eat bad. It was more of the fact that we just weren't structured at all. I never grew up in a very structured uh, household when it comes to activity levels. What vows have I made at some point in relation to food, weight, and body. Um, not to, okay, this is, okay, this is something I, I say, this is so true. I, this is what's makes, I'm not, I hope my mom doesn't watch this and takes this the wrong way, but my vows, ever since I was a little kid and I saw her struggle with weight is I'll never be that way and that is actually very was a very damaging uh vow that i made even as a young child like four or five years old uh it damaged a lot of my mom's my relationship with my mom in my childhood and uh, when my mom was going through the divorce process and stuff like that my childhood relationship with her has been repaired since and things like that and my paradigms with her uh and things of that nature has changed in a very positive and drastic way. But um, when I was growing up, and I was the, believe it or not, when I was growing up, I was the only one that was able to maintain a fit weight or an ideal weight or not to be overweight. I was the only girl in my family that was able to be okay. I, I was not a supermodel. I was not a bodybuilder either, but I was able to keep weight off and look halfway decent. Um, and this is uh, basically going back to my childhood and say I have what vows I've made in, about my body, food, and weight is that I will never allow food to be a way to fill my soul in emotionally. I would never use food as a way to um, repair it, you know, as a comfort item. I still don't use overeat uh, to food to be comfort food. So th this is a very, very, very personal card uh, for this particular question. And this is a, definitely a journaling card that I'm going to have to do later. Okay, that was number nine, number ten. What are my true feelings and beliefs about food and weight and body? It's a social thing. You know, food, I believe, uh, and it, it's culture. You know, that's why we have, you know, every culture has their own unique food. Like Chinese food, food is... Uh, kind of exclusive to China, the Indian food is close, exclusive to this culture, and this food is exclusive to that culture. I, My family is very, very open to um, different cultures and different food, but it's a social thing. It's what brings us together. That's why a lot of us uh, post a lot of food on Instagram, because food is something that brings people together, a commonality. It's a culture. It's a something that unifies us together and that's what this is uh card is saying and i think jennifer ball actually got this one too <laughs> which is even funnier which is really hilarious what blockages stop me releasing weight laziness <laughs> the, the just the ability of not taking care of myself it just you know, not getting up from the couch and just not doing, you know, using excuses and just being lazy. That, that's 
basically what this is. Laziness. Pure, flat out laziness. Or maybe even a t time of mental rest and laziness because of things going on with Judith and things like that and using her as an excuse yet again. All right. Uh, number 12. How much do I feel I deserve slim trim tone, vibrant, eh, eh, energetic body? How much do I feel I deserve a slim trim? Okay. I get it now. I feel like I'm entitled to it. And I feel sometimes uh, High Priestess card is like that divine knowing or that feminine divine knowing. Whereas that uh, Hierophant card is more of like that masculine divine knowing or that masculine knowing or that divine knowing. Where I feel like for me the, um, uh, the High Priestess card and the uh, Hierophant card are like the masculine, feminine flips of each other. And I do believe that the High Priestess too is another combination of coming from the Magician card, where it's uh, also not just divine knowing, but divine creating with that knowledge base or that female knowledge base or that internal feminine uh, motherly knowing in a way. <clears throat> And so it feels like I'm, I feel like this is the reversal and it's how it feels like I'm entitled. And I, this is the keywords uh, and intuitive hits I'm getting from this particular card is entitlement, a sense of entitlement. I don't know how to explain it. I, I just feel entitled sometimes. All right. How does keeping these beliefs save my save me currently? Oh, that's a good question. It saves me from uh, <laughs> saying some really nasty things to people. <laughs> uh. I'm I'm just kind of breathing into the um, question too. So how? does keeping these beliefs serve me currently? It keeps me from being a flat out jerk to everybody. <laughs> um, and also it's a, because it's a thought or communication and passion. So it's a thought of communication and passion that, uh, that the King of Wands has. And it's uh, saved me from, you know, saying some bad things to people and saying bad things about myself and just being a negative person. It, it makes me more benevolent and it makes me a lot more um, humble, I think. <clears throat> what frightens me about really seeing these beliefs? I feel like I don't have the inner strength to, to do it. That's what it is. It's a, is that I feel like that I feel like I would lash out to people and just be a ruthless Evie. And what are the gifts and is what is the gifts and weight challenges? It gives you some introspection. It, it gives you emotional structure and it gives you emotional introspection. And it it kind of teaches you how to be humble, teaches you how to be grateful for what you do have, um, whatever. <clears throat> okay, I don't have coffee. <laughs> I was going to get clear my throat for a second, but it teaches you how to be humble, how to be grateful for having a good looking body, basically. It's, it teaches you gratefulness. It does teach you a bit of humility and don't hurt others for being overweight because like I've I felt like I've hurt my mom a lot in the past being a naive child and feeling very visceral and feeling very I will never be that I was so mean I felt like that there was a that was a part of my shadow self in the past that it was not a good time in my past. It was, and the cards are kind of revealing this to me now, is that I was not nice to my mom when she was going through problems. And I was not 
always very nice to her when she needed that sympathy and that love and and saying that it's okay to be overweight right now. It's okay. So it's teaching me humbleness that I'm struggling with weight problems right now too. So it's teaching me to not be a jerk. And I'm feeling a very, very, maybe I should text my mom and say, I love her. I know I love you. <laughs> feeling like that today right now, but I did have a nice phone conversation with her today. So maybe that makes up for a lot of this <laughs> reading today. Who would I be without these blockages? I'd be, a uh, oh no, the death card. Who would I be without these blockages? I'd be so liberated. I'd be reborn. I would be a new person. I would be happy. I would be running around with the girls and uh, doing some very, I would be happy. I would be a new me. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna cry on camera. <laughs> What would need to happen for me to feel safe in releasing these blockages? Emotional, just love. Action and emotions is love. I need just some love. I need some support. I need some people to love me and say that I will do a good job. Oh, oh my God. This reading is now going to make me cry. <laughs> Okay, what is my uh, potential for greatness? Being a great mother, being a great person, being a very great um, emotionally physical person. I would be uh, physically whole again. <laughs> it's so appropriate. She showed up at the very last card too because she's my year ahead card. Oh, this is going to be a disaster video. <laughs> Another disaster video. But I'm feeling very emotional right now. <laughs> I need to eat something. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I'm, I'm being a jerk. Oh. Mm. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to do some journaling. Apparently, I released some emotional tension with all this. <sighs> you all have a good day. This, okay, I'm going to do some self-advertising at the end of my video. And the links below, there's a link to my Patreon page. It will have two options right now. I have a $1 option and a $5 option. A $1 option is exclusive blog posts and um, blog updates. Um, some exclusive blog updates specifically more gathered towards the J Shadows Tarot. I'm going to do some more time lapse, exclusive time lapse videos of my art grimoire, but that I'm not going to put it on YouTube publicly, but it will be on my Patreon for a dollar and five dollars. And the five dollar option is uh, the three card, personalized three card readings and stuff for the month and all the access to my Patreon page and stuff. And the five dollar um option is uh, for personal readings is limited to two um personalized uh, three card draws a month so everything else is on my etsy account i love you all you're my tribe kisses hugs <laughs>